Well, welcome everybody to another edition of Behind the Mic in this beautiful studio here at Music Town in Hockey Town in downtown Detroit. Thanks for joining us for another edition. Uh, as I do every week, love to bring in local artists, sometimes a national or so if they're coming through town, but uh, local is my thing. And this week I have another local gem, Miss Holly Burnt. Hello, Holly. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. And you are actually um, one third of the Holly Burnt band. I am. Okay. Yes. The other two guys, Jimmy and Max. Yeah. Okay, couldn't make it in. Okay. Yeah. But the three of you, you pretty much do a lot with the three of you, right? And we do. Well, we're the core of the band. Okay. Um, we do the writing and. Uh, but then when we play shows, we do add to other people. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Well, welcome. Thank you for Thank coming you. in. Appreciate Thank it. You. We're going to delve into uh, what Holly's all about <laughs> and hear some music. Uh, let me say, well, just the little sound check we did here. Oh, nice voice. So looking forward to, to hearing the full full set there of what you've got to offer as guitar and have beautiful guitar, by the way. Thank I was you. noticing that while you're checking, sound checking and uh, the, the, the wood on there. What is that? Any idea? It is actually, it's from Mexico, and it's, um, what's the word? Synthetic. Synthetic? <laughs> yeah. Okay. They called it their green guitars. This is their, they were trying not to use wood, but they made it look like wood. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I guess. Well, it looks good, you know, <laughs> even though it's you. fake. You know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I've not heard that term before, so mm. uh, interesting. All right. Well, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Um, wanted to just let people know who may not be familiar with you. I always like to delve into a little bit of the history and how you got to this point, yeah. um, you know, in your music career and, and what you do. So um, I thought it was very interesting how um, you were – you're from the Badlands area, South Dakota, right? Yes. Get my geography right here. Yeah. Um, and I've been there. We've visited that. It's yeah. really, really cool. That must have been hard to leave that area. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, well, and actually, a quick correction. I I think that I was said in Metro Times I live in, I'm from the Badlands. I I lived about 15 minutes from there. Still In counts. the Black Hills. But we can still call it because it does sound, it sounds cool. Yeah. Well, the Black Hills, the yeah. Black, but yeah, it was, it's, um, like, my heart is there. I, it's just so beautiful, and, and the nature there is just gorgeous. Did, you didn't grow up there, though, did you? I grew up oh, there. Oh, okay, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Because yeah. I know you were, tra you've been around a lot. Yes. You moved a lot, so yeah. I didn't know that's where you were from originally. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, that, yeah. That's, that's what I call my hometown. Well, you, you all need, you, we all need a place that, you know, is ground. This is where I'm from. I'm grounded, you know, whatever. Yeah. And um, it's, it's kind of a good way to just... Plant yourself somewhere exactly. and relate to that in mm -hmm. re reference to that, which also is part of your music. You your n debut album mm -hmm. had a lot to do with the Badlands, right? Yes. It okay. Did. Yeah. Well, when you live it, you yeah. kind of feel it too. So yes. What's the name of this the debut? Um, so this one with the Holly Burnt Band is Lightning on the Vine. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of songs about. Yeah. The Badlands or no? I I think I tend to be nostalgic. <laughs> Nothing wrong with so, that. <laughs> I end up, yeah, it just happens. I, the songs end up being about running around the woods and mm. just the feel. You know, sometimes it, lyrically it's not exactly about that, but I feel it's about that. If that oh, makes okay. Sense. Okay. In your head, you're, you've got that thought mm -hmm. and it probably makes it easy to put down the words yeah. because you can feel that even though it's not exactly explaining I'm on the badlands you know kind yes. of thing you know, so, yeah exactly yeah, yeah that makes sense that makes sense yeah. I'm not a songwriter but I can relate to that <laughs> um and how often do you get to go back there um I try to um, lately I mean on average once every every other year because okay. my grandparents are still living there so I was just there in July and had a great time my grandpa turned 90 oh wow so, yeah, we were there to celebrate that with him, and, yeah, it's a wonderful time. Did you, when you go back there, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you you write songs about that because you still feel it, mm -hmm. and, you know, that was a big part of your life, but when you go back there, is there, like, a, a burst of inspiration and, and wanting to put pen to paper? Yes, yeah, in general. Not every time, but, yeah, in general, I do. I end up, I think everywhere I find, everywhere I go... Um, when I'm traveling, I'll very often a new song will pop up in my mm. head that has a different feel. Okay. So I think it's just the the muse that lives in the area, kind of. <laughs> that's kind of that's what I attribute it to. But yeah. 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 What is your um, 
as far as songwriting goes? Mm-hmm. Do you have a process or just whenever, whatever just pops in your head and you just start writing? Yeah, I mean, that's for me when I'm writing a song myself, I, I, it pop, usually pops in my head. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to just go, I'm going to go sit down and write a song. So um, it's kind of humbling because... It, it, it's one of those things where you just kind of got to go get it down yeah. uh, while it's there. With the band, it's been really cool because they just play something, you know, like Jimmy Dixon, who's our guitarist, will put something out on the guitar, and then Max will be playing the drums, and then I'll just start riffing. <laughs> I love that. I was just, that is so cool. I mean, obviously, that's what you do for a living, but just to get a little inspiration from one of your band members oh, and just yeah. start just start jamming and come up with something. Yeah. I think that is so cool. Yeah, and it's stuff I wouldn't have come up with myself. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I think a lot of the songs on Lightning on the Vine are, you know, like, they remind me a bit more of Detroit, and they have, like, a feel that's kind of a city feel, mm-hmm. I would say. And that, a lot of that is from their their experiences, too. Three heads are better than one. So true. <laughs> Very true. Do you ever go, have you ever just started out with nothing in mind? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, we got to come up with something or whatever. Yeah. And and, and then, like, what, all-nighters or, or something and just, or is it quick? It's pretty quick. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, finessing it, now, it'll be quick. I will say sometimes when we write together, I it takes me a while to get the lyrics. So we had... Um, I mean, I, I'm like embarrassed to say this, but we had uh, somebody, our manager booked us a show and it was two and a half hours and we didn't have enough material. So we're like, okay, oh. we have to do these new songs. Okay. And I was. That's making, a scary thought. It was. It was a little scary, but I was making up the words as I was. I was like kind of oh. riffing on stage, <laughs> like hoping nobody would notice. So. <laughs> it's, it's, it's out it takes, there now, yeah, Holly. It's there. <laughs> so it takes a while sometimes. That that's scary. It's like, oh my gosh, we've booked this. Yeah. We don't have enough material. Yeah. <laughs> you could do covers, I would think, yeah, but we, yeah, um, we do still fill, fillers. We'll call yeah. them fillers. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you know, I like well, the adrenaline here and there. <laughs> hopefully, you had enough time to you yes. know, come up with some music and wasn't like uh, your book this coming Friday. You know. <laughs> no, we had we did have a little time. It, it, the songs were done. It's just me and the lyrics. Okay. So <laughs> do you think when something like that happens and I mean, obviously there's pressure there, it's like time frame, you yeah. have to get this done. Do you work better that way or do you? Oh, yeah. OK. I Yeah, that's so funny that you say that because it's something I've just realized about myself recently. I always am, get down on myself for procrastinating. Mm-hmm. And then I've finally just been like, you know what? I work so much better under pressure. I can, you know, like interesting. it's just part of who I am and you know I should be a little better about it but I, you kind of have to embrace it if you know that's where your best work comes out yeah, yeah so well you know procrastination is affects all of us yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you see a deadline though yeah, you, you, you gotta you gotta hit that you line here hit soon it. yeah it really <laughs> kicks kicks us in gear so that's true uh, and interesting with songwriting that makes you come up with a song quickly yeah. or, or do you think that when you are in those situations that your songs, do you feel they're better than when you're not in that situation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. And sometimes when I've, you know, when I had to ad lib words on stage, <laughs> I'll be like, oh, wait, those are the words I needed for the song. Oh, that's funny. Because it just, you know, like it's just the pressure is there. So like, you have to say something right when it comes out. And, you know, once in a while it once in a while, it doesn't work out. Once in a while, it does. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully more it does more than it does not. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. I don't know. That's just crazy thinking, I'm just going to start making up the lyrics while I'm up here. Yeah. I, that would just drive... I would be so nervous. Uh, <laughs> wow. Boy, you, yeah. do, uh, you do function on adrenaline. I do, I guess. <laughs> wow. True. Well, good for you. Okay. Uh, how about we hear a song? Okay. All right, what are you going to start off with? This is called Whiskey and a Gun. A stage from hellfire brought my brother 
to a different point of view of a sad existence and the fear of lonesome when you're catching up but you never really made it through don't give the sad man a whiskey and a gun when the sun goes down well turn the page now it's an easy sunday laughing talking on the porch on 7th street impressions of elvis in his leather jacket made me laugh so hard that the tears fell down my cheeks don't give the sad man Whiskey and a gun when the sun goes down. Well, if you start feeling lonely, leave the light on at the end of the drive. But if you're still holy rolling, let me know so I can cry. Oh, you're back to Jesus And you stopped your drinking And you're seeing that wise man About six times a week Don't you know I loved you Even in the hard times It's like you fell from heaven But you didn't get on your feet Don't give the sad man Whiskey and a gun when the sun goes down. Well, if you start feeling lonely, leave the light on at the end of the track. But if you're still holy rolling, let me know so I can call. Don't give the sad man whiskey and a gun. Don't give the sad man whiskey and a gun. Don't give the sad man whiskey and a gun when the sun goes down. When the sun goes down. If you start feeling lonely. Holly Burnt with us here on Behind the Mic. <clears throat> is that from the? Uh, is that on the debut? Ellen? It is not. It's it is newer. Not. It's going to be on the next one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I was hearing a little bit of that, you know, um, the you know the Badlands Black Hills yeah. thing, you know, picturing you know a cowboy uh -huh. <laughs> as opposed to someone today. Exactly. You know, <laughs> I love that line. Uh, sad man with a whiskey uh, and a gun. Thank you. True. Yes. <laughs> It is true. <laughs> Good stuff. So you're so you're working on a new mm -hmm. album, okay? The debut just came out this year, though. Yeah, we just can. We have a lot of new songs. Okay. So it's May as well put them out there. Might for, as well. <laughs> let people hear your music and enjoy it. Yeah. 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 So when do you expect this new one to come out? Um, you know, it's so hard to say. I I would say What's by the end. What's your goal? Of this, I would say by the end of this year. Okay. Yeah. Right. We'd like to have something maybe sooner, but uh, you know, I don't want to say that, and then it always takes longer than you think it will. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> typical, you know. Th- yeah. If it's not just you, it's not just the music and putting out you know the mixing and mm-hmm. the editing and the mastering and you know, the artwork all of that so yeah, exactly. it's quite a production so well good yeah. for you Thank well you. I like that good good Thank song you. in there um, and then, did you, was this one work uh, written with Jimmy and Max as well yes okay yeah okay so that makes it nice you know, yeah you've got a good team going for the the writing absolutely. in that absolutely absolutely. All right, yeah, your debut just came out, like, in March or something? Mm-hmm. February, March, March 31st. Jeez, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where do people find your music so that they can... So you can find it on um, Amazon, iTunes, Spotify. Okay. Spotify. All of, all of, all of them, yeah. Yeah, Spotify is preferable right now. Uh, yeah, just kind of helps when you have people listening to stuff so that it gets out there yeah. a more. Yeah, so. people yeah. share it more and more, mm-hmm. and yeah. And, you, is, uh, and then you get on a certain... When you get that sound, you can get attached yeah. to other sounds. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you're exploring music. Exactly. It's really nice to, to find stuff like that. Yeah. And your voice. I uh, have to obviously talk about this. It's beautiful. It's so so angelic is a oh, good word for it. You. Yeah, very pretty. Um, but you grew up on gospel and mm-hmm. hymns and everything. And Did you sing in the choirs as well? No, but I... Um, well, yeah, actually I did uh, for a little while. But um, I, I would write a lot of songs and sing them in church so, oh okay yeah <laughs> that counts I grew up doing that <laughs> doing the altar calls <laughs> I have to I have to talk about this story I think it's so funny and so mm-hmm. cool of how you know because that is the type of music that you were growing up on and exposed to and everything and then your brother yeah your older brother <laughs> Yeah, smuggle the record. I just, tell us that story. I'm, yeah, for people that may not know of it. Yeah, so I was about uh, fourteen when my my brother got um, Goo Goo Dolls, a Goo Goo Dolls album, and I really had never heard. Um, he did well. I'll get back to that, but I had really never heard secular music uh, until that time. Uh, you know, unless I was obviously in a store or something, mm-hmm. but. Um, he played me Black Balloon by the Goo Goo Dolls, and it just kind of changed my life. I mean, after that, I would go and uh, I would like go th- make excuses to go sit out in the car <laughs> and listen to FM radio. I need some alone time, people. I, uh, <laughs> but it's so funny because uh, he read the article in the Metro Times, and he's like, "Well, um, he's like, y- you don't remember this, but." My other brother and him snuck in a the Joshua Tree album. Oh, a good when one. When I was really young, and and then they told me that it was a Christian band because I still haven't found what I'm looking for. You know, like okay. and then so I okay. wouldn't tattle on them. Oh, and, <laughs> and I was like, you know, it's so funny because actually I do know all those songs. It's one of my favorite albums okay. now. But that's funny. But yeah, he, <laughs> he corrected me on that one. So good, yeah. I wouldn't have tattled you because it's Christian. We're good. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How? What's the difference in age? So you were about fourteen, or st- yeah. So he, how many years older? Ah, uh, he's two years older. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but he well, he was better at sneaking things. I, I've always been. Uh, I, I have a hard time sneaking around, lying and things like that. He was always way better at <laughs> you know sneaking stuff into the house. So. Well, the question is, how did he find out about this? You know, oh, how was he exposed to the all of this good music? It's a good question. Yeah. I think he was always kind of he. You know, I, I think it's different too when you're a boy. Like the my brothers were raised a little differently than I was, where you know I was very sheltered. I wasn't allowed to have friends outside of you know the church or you know and Mm -hmm. I think it was a little different for them so they may have had okay more influences (laughs) than I did (laughs) didn't help keeping you sheltered right no (laughs) eventually thanks to big brothers yeah right (laughs) (laughs) oh that's cool and then so all of a sudden you're just your eyes opened up and Mm -hmm. it's like oh my goodness there's so much stuff out there yeah yeah Yeah. and you just I, I I'm trying to picture like all of a sudden you're like just hungry for all this music and and all yeah. these new things and yet you have to kind of be on the sly at this point yeah. still so you know that that had to be a little yeah tricky yeah yeah it was I mean well and I really never had any albums of my own until I was probably 18 and you know it's kind of cool in a way like um certain things like I remember listening to the white album for the first time when I was 21 and well that probably blew your mind <laughs> it blew my mind yeah you know it's like and the person that was I was with was like oh my gosh this is 
so cool. Like, I wish I could have this experience over again. (laughs) (laughs) Or just, you know, have the experience as an adult or, you know, so there's positives and negatives to it. Yeah. yeah. The White Album celebrating, that's 50 years ago that thing came out. Yeah, amazing. Amazing is right. And just... I mean, you know, listening to it today, I mean, thinking, well, kid, if kids found it today, yeah. you know, what would they think, you know, uh-huh. kind of thing. But, um, I'm sh- and I'm, it influences, influenced many, many people. Yeah. So, still um, does, yeah. yeah, still does, still, still considered a good album, yeah. I think. <laughs> I don't know. I listen to that over and over and over and over. I think I wore mine out with yeah. the Beatles. So, um, cool stuff. So, Beatles, Beatles influence a lot of. Do you have other artists? I mean, because you were exposed to the Goo Goo Dolls and the mm. U2 and early on, but do you have artists that really influence you now and um, well, they, lately, yeah, I mean, it, it changes. Lately, uh, I've been listening to a lot of Jason Isbell. I really like his style. Um, John Prine is a big one for me. Wow. Because he's such That's a, interesting. Well, he, <laughs> he's, I love stories, and okay. his songs are all such great stories. He's such a good storyteller. Interesting. So, yeah, I love, I would count him as one of my top three. That would then the last name I would have thought you would have thrown out there. John Prine, interesting. Yeah. yeah. But he's, yeah, he's got some good stuff. Oh, yeah. He doesn't get enough airplay, but, you know, no. unfortunately. But he's good to see in uh, live, too. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, his, I haven't seen him live, but I've watched videos. And, yeah. yeah he's oh, a that's g- interesting. Great t- storyteller in song and not in song. <laughs> when you hear these great artists, you know, that and their storytelling through their song, what does that do to you as a musician? Well, it it, it makes well, I, like I said, I love I love that, and it makes me want to be better. Okay. Um, and it, I listen to lyrics. Uh, I think more than most people. Or I think you know some people are like me where they love lyrics, but I love lyrics. Like that's what I I, <laughs> I really want. I love lyrics. I, I <laughs> really love them. <laughs> well, that's part of the storytelling. Yeah. Is, you know, you got to have the good lyrics. Yeah. So it just yeah it makes me want to be better. And creating it, you know, there's things. There's certain words that people will use where they're not even saying anything, but it's the way the word is in the melody that uh-huh. will just like kind of like poke you in the chest mm. and and kind of give you an emotion and you're like what is that where do you know so like trying to find those little magic moments yeah do you ever take stuff from not not don't mean stealing but like you know you hear something and it sparks uh, something for you and writing yeah does that happen a lot <clears throat> yeah yeah i think it it you get it, well, sometimes it's difficult because you're when you're writing a song, you always are like, okay, I have to make sure I'm not <laughs> not just like writing a song I just heard. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, you'll hear different ideas or, um, yeah, like like I said, different phrases that invoked a feeling in me, and then I like, you know, I can take a little something mm-hmm. from that and yeah. put it in my own music for yeah. sure. Not unusual. Most yeah. musicians borrow from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it all started at one little point, and yeah. then just phew, yeah sharing and 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 learning from other artists so yeah how about we hear another song okay um is this another new one or off the this debut? one is on the album okay this one is uh this is called good gone or dead Proof. 
Maybe I'll say something You won't forget You can think it over When I'm good and born and dead You will think it over Allie Bird here on Behind the Mic at Music Town. You're such a soft, even keel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it helps when it's just me on the guitar. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, when Jimmy's on the guitar, you mean you get a little... I have to, yeah. yeah. Crank it up a little crank bit? Crank it up a yeah, bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of nice and relaxing for me. Yeah, that's no, great. So. Um, I want to uh, quote something, and I don't remember where I saw this, your, your site or something, but it says... Um, Helping, you're helping to rejuvenate the Detroit music scene. Um, what? It, how about? Uh, how are you doing that? Or what's that all about? Well, I'm sure I read it somewhere. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> I probably didn't write it, but uh, um, <laughs> uh, I, well, I think all musicians, they, we're that's a if you're if you're out playing, you're out helping to rejuvenate oh, okay. the the scene, you know, and if you're putting a lot of effort into what you're doing and you're trying to sound as good as possible and, um, and playing venues that uh, make you sound good. I okay. think that's part of what okay. it means. I didn't know if you were, you know, you had this mission or something oh, that you were no. on and, you know, trying to help musicians. Uh, I don't think, I don't know that it needs too much rejuvenation. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty it's, good it's, right it's, now. It's doing well. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, what is she doing? I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to know. All right. We're uh, going to jump to the Pam exam. Okay. Which is just some questions that I like to ask my guests. You know, cool. just random. Random. Never know. <laughs> and we All may, right. have, you may have answered some of these, so I'll just pass on. Oh. Your favorite food and beverage of choice. Oh, my favorite food and beverage of choice. I think I like Italian food and soda water. <laughs> okay. Is that? <laughs> I'm Ooh, on the, I'm on the a... LaCroix kick. Oh. Yeah. That is, yeah, I, I see that with more people walking around with those, and it's like, yeah, they they really have a thing going right now. <laughs> uh, if you could be on the cover of a magazine, which one would it be, and why? Oh, that's a good question. I guess the obvious thing would probably be Rolling Stone, just because it has such a history. Yeah, but I'm that'd be cool. Kind of an obvious answer. <laughs> that'd be a good one. The cover of the Rolling Stones is yeah, uh, Doctor Hook wants it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, this is kind of interesting. And this may um, kind of goes into what we were talking t to uh, about earlier with your brother and the, the Goo Dolls and you too. But um, two-parter here. The first record you ever bought and then the first concert you ever attended. Oh. <laughs> um, Once you were able to buy it and, you know, you were, it was clear. <laughs> yeah, this is Lincoln Park. Okay. Oh, Interesting. And the first concert I attended was um, 
Who's that guy from Matchbox 20? Uh, Adam Levine? No, Ro- Rob. Oh, Rob Thomas. Rob Thomas. I had the wrong guy. <laughs> wrong guy. I'm thinking Maroon 5. I'm sorry. So, yeah. Rob Thomas, yes. Yeah, Rob Thomas. Okay. I got tickets. Somebody gave me tickets to that. <laughs> was he doing a solo or was it with a... He was with a band, but he. I think I think he did an album that probably was maybe 2006 or six that I went to that, okay. and I think he had just put out an album a solo on his album. own. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I saw him. Right. <laughs> That's always interesting, and depending on the age and everything, you know, what people say, what they did, or yeah. where they first concert or what album and stuff, so... It always gives a good ins- um, indication of where you're at. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, is there a song that inspires you to go in that inspired you to go into the music biz? A song or a person, event, anything that made you do what you're doing? Um, <clears throat> not, not really. I think I always just wanted to do it, even, <laughs> even when I was little. I just, just want to be. I want to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was little, I, I, you know. That was my favorite thing to do was play music, and I never, you know, and I, I really didn't have, <clears throat> there were Christian artists that uh, I could listen to that probably, if anything, would have been that inspiration mm-hmm. at the time, but yeah, it, it's just something I've always wanted to do, and then I kind of kept that Okay. going as I got older <laughs> yeah and then once you were exposed to some other type of music yeah. it's like kaboom right it yeah was like, that's oh true. my gosh very yeah. true yeah. yeah so did you take uh vocal lessons or guitar lessons or anything I took vocal lessons okay, okay. yeah well you do have a beautiful voice thank you um let's see I think we already answered that one uh have you ever had a frightening moment on stage um Not really. That's good. <laughs> but we were playing. Uh, we were playing. Pig and whiskey. That's probably the scariest moment I've had. It's not even really? that scary. But we were playing pig and whiskey uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And Jimmy's guitar string broke, and I, all I saw out of the corner of my eye was him dive. He would like dove to grab another guitar, and I thought he passed out. That was probably oh. the most. And then I was like, oh, I learned. So that's, yeah, that's really the most scary thing that's happened to me on stage <laughs> so far, which isn't that scary. No, it's pretty mild. Yeah, pretty mild. <laughs> Hate to say it, but pretty yeah. mild. <laughs> Jimmy added a little excitement yeah, on stage. Well, okay. Got my heart there for a second. <laughs> oh, gosh. If you could have any one person in your band, uh, and they could be dead or alive at this point, mm. um, who would that be? Oh, wow, well, that's a good question. Or collaborate with either or. Um, hmm. I didn't mean to stump you. That's a, that's a stumper. <laughs> I don't, I mean, like my first thought was Jimi Hendrix. Oh. But um, okay. But yeah, there's Jimi th- Hendrix. Yeah. Wow. I, okay. Trying to picture this, Jimi Hendrix. I mean, his style and you know the yeah. But he he's and a you blues thing. I love. <laughs> so we could work it out. Yeah, figure it out something. <laughs> I was at first in in my when watching you trying to think of something. I'm thinking she's gonna come up with a, a good storyteller songwriter. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. That would be good too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you have a Give me one item that's on your bucket list, if you have a bucket list. And yeah. if you don't, what would it be? One <laughs> um, uh, item on my bucket list. Uh, yeah, I think I do have a mental bucket list. Um, that's, that's a stumper. <laughs> I didn't mean to really? stump you with my questions You're really today. <laughs> good at that. Um. <laughs> yeah, I tell people just what the first thing that comes off top of your head, just spit it out. Yeah, um... Well, musically, it would probably to be able to play. Uh, you know, honestly, at this point, you know, I'd I'd love to be able to play a room like the Royal Oak Music Theater. Oh, and uh, you know, and have people that could fill that room. Like that to me is like a that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good goal. I'm sure. You, yeah, you, the way you're going, just keep going, and yeah. eventually, maybe. <laughs> Do you, so to get to that point, so you're playing, um, you just said you were at the Pig and Whiskey, which is an outdoor festival. Yeah. And so 
you, a lot of musicians need to do those kinds of festivals, get exposure, and yeah. start building a base. You know, people start following you and going to hear you sing and everything. So yeah. you got to get key. to that point sometimes. You, yeah, they're not going to book someone that you know no. fills a a room that only seats a hundred. You know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the point. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, keep at it. So mm-hmm. I mean. I mean, your debut album just came out a few months ago, but you've been doing this a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and you're kind of based right in Detroit at this point. Yeah. So you, you need to get a following. It takes a while to people to get to know you and what you do and everything. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, that's a good goal, though. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> what is your favorite non-music pastime? Um, probably reading. Fiction, I, non-fiction? Both. <laughs> Reading, yeah, reading or um, hiking, anything outside. Yeah. That's a, a good time to be inspired, I would imagine, outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you got to have pen and paper or some kind of recording device because <laughs> yeah. something could come to mind, you know, <laughs> walking on a trail and all of a oh, sudden, yeah. bing, and it's like nothing to write on. Yeah. <laughs> Give it, me a leaf and some crayon, you know, <laughs> some, a piece of slate or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's funny. Oh, that's good. That's a good game. Yeah. A g- oh, a game. Oh, shoot. That's the first person that is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about we hear another song, Holly? Okay. This is, um, the song is called Penny on the Tracks. And is this on the debut? This or is no? on the debut. Yeah. Penny on the Tracks. Okay. Holly yeah. Burnt. I wrote this for my little sister. Oh. Slow down, baby There's no reason to be living Life so fast It's a crucial hour You should be looking for a way To make it last Probably go right back for more, but that's just as well. Keep circling the sun, remembering that you loved. Cause it ain't easy running in the springtime. Your burdens heavy on your back. Saw the sweetest face and it never left my mind. And I'm sure I've told you the same story before, but I tell it from time to time. So you remember. And so I never forget. Keep 
honey on the tracks Friends will come and go They're fickle like the wind But you've got to let them in behind the mic this morning nice it's soft <laughs> <laughs> nice voice thank you do you have to do warm-ups and stuff to go so low or is that just the norm uh i have to do warm-ups to go high <laughs> oh okay <laughs> yeah. well good um i just want to you mentioned colorado in there and, and remembered you had moved around a lot mm -hmm. like you lived in several different states of course yeah. we talked about south dakota living there growing up in south dakota and you're in michigan now yeah. where else did you live um, I live, so, Minnesota, California, West Virginia. Wow, all over. Oregon, South Dakota, and here. Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> Col yeah, Colorado is, uh, we adopted my little sister. So, when I was 10, we adopted her, and we picked her up there. Oh. So. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. And the, that song you said was, mm -hmm. what's your sister's name? Brianna. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, it's it's crazy how you bounce around. So, I mean, you're in Michigan. How long have you been in Michigan? Ten years. Ten. Oh, yeah. just kind of, you're where you're, you're grounded at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully, you don't plan to leave too soon. <laughs> I mean, the music scene here is pretty cool. So, yeah, it is. who would want to leave, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got this great music town, and you know, it's always there's always so many venues promoting local music so yeah that is nice Very if you're nice. a local musician this is a good place to be mm -hmm. and uh, you even though you're not on the mission to rejuvenate it has it is happening and you know it's getting stronger and stronger even though a lot of us know it's been strong for a while but we need the mainstream to know that as well so yes so yeah. we're trying to do here is promote all our local great uh, artists and everything so yeah. Um, again, let people know where they can find your music and where you're playing and all that good stuff. Okay. So, yeah, uh, you can find us on Facebook uh, under Holly Burnt Band. It's B-E-R-N-T. And Spotify, you can find our music everywhere on the Internet. That music is sold pretty much. Okay. Our next show will be Arts, Beats, and Eats. Uh, we're playing Saturday at 5 o'clock. Oh, so you so. guys can finally talk about that. We had a few yeah. artists on there like, we can't say it yet. Yeah. So, okay, that's they, good to know. They have it on their website, so I think oh, I'm allowed to you're say good. it. You're safe. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great, um, a great festival. I love that festival. Labor yeah. Day weekend. Four days. I know. Four days. Really and a lot of music. Lot. You know, I just go, I'm, you know, yeah, there's great arts and there's mm -hmm. the great eats. Yeah. But I go for the beats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, it's so fun, you know, and, and, and so many art. I mean, with four stages. Yeah. It's just pack them in. hard not to find some good music. I mean, yeah. well, let me let me rephrase it. It's all good music, yeah. but it's hard to pick. Yeah. You know, who do I go see? And it's like, and then of course, you know, you're at this end of the festival, and you want to see an artist that's at the other end, and you're I, sometimes I, I walk miles I trying to catch everybody and see everything. That's a great festival. Yeah, I mean, there's so many festivals around here, but that that's always a good one. So good for you. Yeah, thank and you. And so you'll have the full band there, I'm yes. assuming. Yeah. The three or the five? The five. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Holly Burnt Band. Yep. HBB mm -hmm. is it? They like yeah. to say <laughs> they are whoever they are. <laughs> the yeah. HBB band. Yeah. No, HBB. HBB. Yep. Holly Burnt Band. So you're you're kind of the core of it, and and you met Jimmy and Max. How did you meet them? So they own Homestead Studios, which okay. is in the Russell, <clears throat> and they record a lot of the local artists around here. Okay. They. I was in another band before this band, and. We recorded our album there, and then that band kind of fizzled out. Um, and then after that, Jimmy and Max were like, "Let's let's do some mm -hmm. work together." So we started just clicked really fast for us. So that would be uh, interesting if you are, um, you know, a studio, which we we are recording studio here as well for yeah. local musicians. 
and you hear if you're you know running the boards or doing the engineering whatever and you hear these bands and you're trying to get you know um, a band together whatever and you you've got the, the pickings you can hear people and yeah. how they work and you know what they sound like yeah. it's like okay I gotta I gotta work with this person or with mm-hmm. that person yeah. so you were in the right place at the right time apparently <laughs> yeah well and it, yeah it's really cool because they it's it, that's exactly how it works and now um, Jimmy he he does a lot of work with you know, like I said local musicians and and it's cool because he'll have somebody that comes in without a band at all oh. and he'll and he'll he knows everybody any any instrument you want mm-hmm. he knows the mm-hmm. right person to call so it's really cool so we kind of yeah. get that for our band too okay yeah that is cool i guess yeah, yeah. you need a drummer i can let's see yeah how about yeah. this will be good yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> my rolodex even though you don't use those anymore but <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> drum section let's see yeah <laughs> he does have a rolodex <laughs> oh that's funny well that's cool well good yeah. you were obviously a, needed to hook up with them so i'm yeah. in i'm assuming i mean just what i saw online from the hearing the the whole band, uh, the three of them together. Mm-hmm. So it was good stuff. So, yeah. all right, I'm going to check you out Saturday at the Arts Beats and East. Yes, at five yeah. o'clock. All right, and you're working on new music, so yep. you've got another album coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, even though your debut just came out, <laughs> well, yeah. maybe by the time you finish it, you know, <laughs> it's a good span. Why not? <laughs> why not? You know, hey, if you've got the music, yeah, you know, why just keep it to yourself? No, that's, that's what I think. So good. We'll look forward to the uh, the next album. Is there a title on that one at this point? No. No, okay. <laughs> Titles always come later, from what yes. I understand. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Yes, so it's very true <laughs> for us, I, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and um, and you pick the song. I mean, of course, if you have a major label, you know they always have a single yeah. off the album. But you know, something from one of the songs or the title sometimes can become the title of the the album as well. So yeah, but that's you're not there yet. Yeah. Put that way. So. <laughs> well, it's been fun. Thank you so much for coming on the show and playing and talking today. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks and, so much um, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And again, just follow Holly on. She's got the website and you know all the all the social media. <laughs> it's so easy for bands these days to uh, get following and yes, you know, like it, like it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Import, like. important for bands it's to get very, all those like yes very yes, important very important mm-hmm. so well thank you again appreciate it thank and um, for playing for us good stuff uh, and thank you for watching as I do every week uh, from here in the beautiful music town uh, in hockey town downtown Detroit <laughs> just kind of rolls off I can't, <laughs> can't stop my, my mouth when I say that um, but thanks again for tuning in. Do appreciate that. And feel free to share it uh, with all your friends uh, once you've done watching us here uh, from Music Time. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Pam Rossi. Have a great week.